This guy needs no introduction. He is the main sex symbol of a generation and an Oscar winner. All of his characters are bright, charming, and completely unforgettable. How did Brad Pitt manage not to get stuck in the image of a handsome lover hero and prove to everyone that he is good in serious dramatic roles? Why was he banned from entering China? And why does he hate his iconic role in Interview with the Vampire? Welcome to the Biographer Channel. Today we will analyze details of Brad Pitt's biography and the history of his ascent to the Hollywood Olympus. But before we begin, I suggest you subscribe and turn on notifications in order to be the first to receive interesting videos about your favorite celebrities. Make the subscribe button white, the bell gray, and we start. William Bradley Pitt was born in Oklahoma on December 18, 1963, and grew up in Missouri. His father worked in a trucking company and his mother was a school counselor. In addition to Brad, there were two other children in the family, Brother Douglas and Sister Julie. As members of the Baptist Church, Brad's parents raised their children in austerity. The family went to church every Sunday and the meal was only after praying. Parents forced the children to sing in a church choir. In an interview, the actor admitted that his father was incredibly cruel to him. According to Pitt, he grew up in a family where there were constant restrictions, prohibitions, and misunderstandings. It was because of his father's cruelty that he eventually stopped believing in God. I've gone through everything. Like, I cling to religion. I grew up with Christianity. Always questioned it, but it worked at times. And then, when I got out on my own, I completely left it and I called myself agnostic. However, the strict rules in the family did not prevent Pitt from growing up as a versatile child and trying himself in different areas. In high school, Bradley was a member of the school's golf, tennis, and swimming teams, but his main hobby was acting on stage. He had classes at the theater, which he still sponsors. After graduating from high school, the young man began to study journalism and advertising at the University of Missouri, Columbia. But two weeks before graduation, he dropped everything and without a degree, went to Hollywood. There, he changed his name to Brad Pitt. I always liked film as a teaching tool, a way of getting exposed to ideas that had never been presented to me. It just wasn't on the list of career options where I grew up. Acting success did not come to him immediately. Pitt took any job to feed himself and pay for expensive acting classes. He worked as a furniture transporter, and at night, he delivered strippers to parties in a limousine. He was even a barker at the El Pollo Loco restaurant chain. He walked the streets dressed as a giant chicken, inviting passersby to visit their establishment. It is interesting that work with strippers was not easy in moral terms, but in some sense helped Brad in his future acting career. The fact is that one of the girls took up Roy London's acting class. Pitt decided to go to the class too, and the knowledge that he got there was really useful to him later. Strippers changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> In parallel, he went to all kinds of auditions. One day, an agent noticed him and decided to take the young talent under his wing. Thanks to him, Pitt began to earn extra money on the set. For example, he was just standing in the doorway or portrayed a waiter in the film with Charlie Sheen. To get noticed and receive the coveted Actors Guild card, he tried to speak during his short appearances. I was an extra in a Charlie Sheen movie and I was a waiter and they were all, it was No Man's Land, D.B. Sweeney, and they were all sitting around a big table scene and I come up with the bottle and I'm supposed to pour champagne and I come around and I think, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. I'm going to try to get a line in. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Because they're all having a conversation. Mm -hmm. I figure maybe I can slip this in. <laughs> and I pour this young actress a, a, uh, a glass of champagne. And I go, would you like anything else? And she looked at me and goes, <laughs> and the director goes, cut, cut. <laughs> oh, and the first no. AD goes, you do that again, you're off the oh, set. And I go, no. Oh, no. Among the first of Pitt's work is the famous Pringles Chips commercial broadcast on TV in 1989. Who knew that this tanned, handsome blonde would become a cinema legend in the future? Oh, no Pringles. Two years later, Pitt finally started getting cameo roles. For example, he got the role in several episodes of the TV series Another World and in everyone's favorite, Dallas. 
Hi, Randy. Hi, Marnie. Hi, Charlie. You look great, Charlie. Thanks. That was followed by roles in Growing Pains, Tales from the Crypt, as well as in the well-known 21 Jump Street, where Johnny Depp began his career. The first major movie role of Brad Pitt was a guy whose illness did not allow him to appear in the sun without protective dark clothes. The film The Dark Side of the Sun was shot in Yugoslavia in the late 80s. Due to the Civil War, part of the film footage was lost for 10 years and the movie was released only in 1997. Yes, sick and tired of this farce. After the first bad experience, the young actor made his way to the cinema as best he could. He first appeared alongside Patrick Dempsey in the comedy Happy Together and then in the horror film Cutting Class, where he played the school basketball star. Let's go to your house, huh? Why? Well, your father's still hunting. We can be alone. For this role, Brad Pitt received his first serious fee, $12,000. In the 90s, Pitt returned to television again to play more serious roles. The actor appears in the TV movie Too Young to Die with Juliette Lewis. His character, Billy, is a drug addict who takes advantage of the defenselessness of young Amanda and makes her an accomplice in a crime. So where you been all night, my love? You do not own me. The hell I don't. I don't owe you nothing else, all right? I care about you. Just... <laughs> During filming, Pitt and Lewis had a whirlwind romance which, alas, did not stand the test of popularity. Juliet remained a promising actress, while Brad moved to a higher level. The handsome man got tired of constant scenes of jealousy, and he left Lewis after three years of marriage, having an affair with Gwyneth Paltrow. Juliet took the break too close to her heart and even tried to commit suicide. Meanwhile, Pitt's career continued to go up. He appeared in six episodes of Glory Days Canvas, the HBO television movie and the movie Across the Track. Summing up the TV roles, Pitt is filming a Levi's commercial. 1991 became a real breakthrough for the young actor. Then came the crime drama Ridley Scott's Thelma and Louise, in which Pitt played the role of the conqueror of hearts, J.D. Well, I may be an outlaw, darling, but... Uh... You're the one stealing my heart. In the film, Pitt has three small episodes, including the famous sex scene with Gina Davis, which brought him fame as the sexiest partner of modern Hollywood. Shortly before that, Pitt starred in the comedy The Favor, but its premiere took place only in 1994 due to the bankruptcy of Orion Pictures. In the films Johnny Suede and Cool World released in a year, Brad played the main roles. However, the films were not well received by critics and did not differ in originality. I'm gonna tell you this once, because you gotta be smarter than you look. You're dealing with shit here that's way over your head. But the role of a fearless reporter in the drama A River Runs Through It by Robert Redford proved that he wasn't just a handsome guy in a cowboy hat, but a talented actor. They say Pitt was very displeased with the results of the first auditions. He was able to insist on being allowed to send a video with another scene. As a result, the second version convinced the director that the actor was really suitable for the role. He doesn't like fishing. He doesn't like Montana. Sure as hell doesn't like me. <laughs> well, maybe what he likes is somebody trying to help. Brad didn't fight so hard for a place in the movie for nothing. A River Runs Through It impressed critics and received a number of Oscar and Golden Globe nominations. And although Brad didn't receive awards, that film took him to a new level and drew the attention of directors to the young talent. In 1993, Pitt starred in a cameo role in Tony Scott's True Romance, written by Quentin Tarantino. His hero never gets up from a couch and constantly smokes weed. By the way, Pitt himself suggested making his character a junkie, always lying on a couch. You condescend me, man. Well, the next project took him to new heights. On November 11th, 1994, Interview with a Vampire, The Vampire Chronicles was released. Kirsten Dunst became famous. Tom Cruise proved that he was able to play the villain. 
Well, for Brad Pitt, shooting in one of the most important films in his career became a living hell. The actor later called the role a failure. That noise. It's driving me mad. That noise! We've been in the country for weeks with nothing but that noise. Yes, they know about us. They watch us dine on empty plates and drink from empty glasses. <sighs> First of all, it was physically hard. Pitt hung upside down every day to rush the blood to his head and to bring out a vein. He also wore a heavy wig and contact lenses that hurt his eyes. Like a real vampire, Pitt did not see the light. Almost all the shooting was carried out at night and then in the middle of winter in foggy Albion. Six months in the fucking dark, the actor complained. The fact that the author of the original book, Anne Rice, was categorically dissatisfied with the casting for the main roles made things worse. The fact is that she wrote the first version of the script herself, representing the perfectly beautiful Frenchman Alain Delon in the image of Louis. It is understandable why the writer was so outraged by the subsequent casting for the film. There was nothing in common between the star of intellectual European cinema and the hopelessly earth Brad Pitt, who advertised fried chicken yesterday. I'm frightened of myself. That, of course, demoralized Brad. If the actor had been inspired by the story itself, all of the above suffering would have paid off. And he did when he was preparing for the role. Pitt was familiar with the book and read the first version of the script, which he was quite satisfied with. But when Brad got the final script two weeks before the start of work, he realized that it would not be at all what he expected. Every day, he felt more and more disappointed in his role. In the book, this guy asked the question, who am I? At that time, it was very close for me. Am I a good person? Am I on the side of the angels? Am I bad? Am I on the side of a devil? In the book, he is in search. In the film, they made the central character of Lestat. Everything connected with it is very interesting and exciting, and I had nothing to do. I just had to sit and watch. Thus, the screenwriters gave the talented actor the background role, not allowing him to really open up. I'm not the spirit of any age. I'm at odds with everything. I always have been. Already in the midst of filming, he felt so depressed that he still tried to leave the project. He was stopped only by a forfeit of $40 million, which he would have to pay the studio back to break the contract. Unhappy, depressed, and missing the sun, Brad was tormented to the end. And I must say, in the film, the lack of enthusiasm for him is noticeable. I walked as I walked years before when my mind swam with guilt at Although the film received mixed reviews in the press, the audience loved it. However, the scene of Kirsten Dunst and Pitt kissing greatly outraged some viewers. It was then discussed for a long time in the media, and the actors later admitted that they felt very uncomfortable during the filming of that moment. In any case, unlike many one-day horror films, the movie made a real splash. The film has firmly entered the category of cinema classics, and it is now considered one of the best films about vampires. Even Anne Rice, after watching, changed her point of view and praised the film adaptation. Have you watched this movie? If so, be sure to write in the comments if you liked it. I read everything and like the best ones. In the same year, Edward Zwick's large-scale epic Legends of the Fall was released, where Sir Anthony Hopkins himself was Brad's partner. The film received numerous Academy Award nominations, including Best Sound and Best Costume Design and Brad finally got his first Golden Globe nomination. Ms. Finn Cannon, it's a pleasure to meet you. I hope you and Ugly here find every happiness together. As if wanting to distance himself as much as possible from the romantic role he got in past projects, in 1995, Brad Pitt played the mentally ill dreamer in Terry Gillum's fantasy thriller 12 Monkeys. Since work on the film began even before the release of the hits that made Pitt an actor of the first magnitude, he was paid a rather modest $100,000 for that role. But in the end, the actor got something more valuable than money. Even Bruce Willis, who was already a star at that time, agreed to the minimum fee. It was all about the opportunity to work with an extraordinary director. 
Pitt visited the psychiatric department of Temple University for several weeks to play the mentally unstable Jeffrey Goins. The actor carefully rehearsed all the awkward, crazy movements of his character and selected a special timbre of his voice. In order for Pitt to be able to pronounce his lines correctly, quickly, and nervously, Terry Gilliam sent him to a tutor. But then he figured out just to limit the actor in smoking, and he, feeling stressed, played exactly as Gilliam wanted. The efforts of this duo were not in vain. For his role, Pitt received a Golden Globe and his first Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. In the same 1995, the film Seven by David Fincher was released. For the filming in it, Brad refused a role in Apollo 13. There were some injuries on the set. During the filming of the chase scene, he slipped, hit his hand on the windshield, and got a ruptured tendon. Pitt had to wear a cast until the end of filming, and the production team had to urgently edit the script so that the character also got injured. As a result, in the scenes that were supposed to take place before the chase, but were filmed later, the actor had to hide his cast hand. Interestingly, studio executives were not satisfied with the ending of the film and asked Fincher to rewrite it. But Brad, who considered her the most suitable, rebelled and threatened to leave the film if the ending was changed. After its release, Pitt was included in the top 25 sexiest stars in the history of cinema, according to Empire Magazine. He was subsequently voted Sexiest Man Alive by People Magazine twice. Brad Pitt became the first and so far the only person to receive this honor twice. But Brad did not have time to enjoy the status of an enviable bachelor, because even during the filming of the movie Seven, he began an affair with Gwyneth Paltrow. The actors immediately became the audience's favorites, appeared everywhere together, and after a year of relationship, they got engaged. Hello, man. Later, Barry Levinson's legal drama Sleepers was released, where Pitt played the role of a lawyer who was sexually abused as a child. His co-stars on the set were Kevin Bacon, Dustin Hoffman, and Robert De Niro. In 1997, paparazzi photographed the actor naked while on vacation with Gwyneth Paltrow in Europe. Pitt sued the magazine and won it, but the whole world had already seen the provocative pictures by that time. In the same year, Brad and Gwyneth broke up. In addition to the wounded soul, Pitt suffered real injuries in that year. The actor spent some time in Northern Ireland preparing for a role in the film The Devil's Own. There, he was attacked and beaten. The most annoying thing is that the film was not worth those bruises at all. There were many problems and misunderstandings on the set. Work on the film was delayed, the script was rewritten several times. Pitt even decided to leave the project, considering the final version of the story incomplete and incoherent, but the producers threatened legal action and he had to stay. According to rumors, the situation was aggravated by his relationship with Harrison Ford. The actors were in conflict all the time on the set, and that despite the fact that Pitt personally suggested Ford for that role. As a result, the film was not particularly liked by the audience and received mixed reviews from critics. In the same year, the film Seven Years in Tibet was released. It described the story of the adventures of an Austrian climber in Tibet during the Second World War. The film was based on the autobiographical book of the same name by the Austrian climber and traveler Heinrich Harrer. Brad got a very complex and controversial character. And it's not even that the actor's accent in this film was named the third worst accent in Hollywood history, according to Empire Magazine. In the film, Heinrich Harrer had a negative attitude towards the Nazis, but before the premiere, there was information that his prototype was actually a member of the Nazi party and served in the SS. However, Harrer later stated that it was mistakes of youth, but an unpleasant feeling remained. Since the film implied a political context, among other things, Pitt was often asked about his position on that matter. Who cares what I think China should do about Tibet? I'm a f***ing actor. I'm a grown man who puts on makeup. When the film was released, the Chinese government denounced it, saying that Chinese communist officers were shown to be excessively rude and cruel to the people of Tibet. Because of that, Pitt, Thulis, and director Jean-Jacques Anad were given a lifetime ban from entering China. Despite all this, many viewers liked the film. And after a while, the ban was canceled and Pitt visited China in 2014 and 2016. 
Following this film, Brad reappeared with Anthony Hopkins in Meet Joe Black, a remake of the 1934 film Death Takes a Holiday. The actor played death that took over the body of a young man. Although the actors coped perfectly, the reviews for the film were mixed. The main reason for the critics' dissatisfaction was the three-hour duration of the film, which slowed down the pace of the narrative too much. At the same time, there were no special effects in the picture, and for some time, the film was the most expensive in the history of cinema, where special effects were not used. A two-hour version was made to show the film on television, but director Martin Brest ridiculed and disowned that one. Therefore, in the credits of the short version, the director's name was changed to the famous Hollywood pseudonym Alan Smithy, which is used in cinema for directors who want to disown the project. The film received several nominations for the most famous anti-awards in the world of cinema and show business in the nomination of the Worst Film of the Year and Worst Remake. Despite this, the film grossed a good box office. Although, according to some film critics, it is believed that this happened due to the fact that before the start of the picture, there was a trailer for Star Wars The Phantom Menace, and fans of the series bought tickets for Meet Joe Black, only because of an opportunity to watch the trailer for the new picture of the legendary saga. While working on the picture, Brad Pitt and his colleague on the set, Claire Forlani, had an affair, which, however, ended quickly enough. But in 1998, the press had a new reason for gossip. Brad started a relationship with Jennifer Aniston, whom he met on a blind date. Pitt was captivated by a carefree, laughing girl who seemed to have been created for him. Rumor has it he even took Greek lessons because Aniston is of Greek descent. Two years later, they got married and Brad himself designed Jennifer's wedding ring. It's funny that the actor played in the TV series Friends the role of a guy who hates Rachel, the heroine of Aniston. Here you go. Rachel Green. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. Are, are you going to be okay? Oh, I'll, I'll be fine. It's just... God, I hate her, Ross. I hate her. <laughs> but for now, let's go back to 1999, the year Tyler Durden appeared. Initially, the producers of Fight Club considered Russell Crowe for the role of the charismatic soap merchant, but then their choice fell on Pitt. Seeing him in action, no one regretted their decision. Have I ever let us down? How far have you come because of me? Pitt did not want to act in Fight Club until Fincher, the director of the picture, himself appeared on his doorstep and over a couple of bottles of beer persuaded him to take on this role. Before filming began, Brad and his co-star Edward Norton had to prepare thoroughly. They seriously took up boxing to make the fight scenes look high quality. And they also attended soap making lessons. How could they go without it? At the same time, Norton and Pitt followed different diet and training regimens in order to show the contrast between the two characters. In an interview, Norton admitted that the goal was to make his character look weaker and weaker and Pitt's character stronger. Brad got bigger and stronger throughout the film, more muscular, tanned, and more handsome as I turned into Gollum. Unfortunately, this subtle visual metaphor is often overlooked by viewers because Pitt is so attractive that most actors will, in principle, look like Gollum in his background. In addition to training, for the sake of filming in the movie, Pitt specifically chipped his front teeth as he felt that it would be in keeping with the character of his hero. Many scenes in the film do not accidentally look too real. The fact is that in the scene where the narrator hit Tyler Durden in the ear for the first time, Norton had only to simulate a strong blow. But a few minutes before the shooting began, Fincher took Norton aside and told him to hit for real. So the grimace of pain on Pitt's face can hardly be called fake. Motherfucker. And in the scene where the narrator and Tyler were playing golf, they were actually drunk. It is clear that Pitt did not really want his parents to see this picture, but they insisted on their own. After watching the chemical burn scene, they really regretted their decision. We're models for God. If our fathers bailed, what does that tell you about God? No, 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 I don't. Listen to me. I have to consider the possibility that God does not like you, never wanted you. In all probability, he hates you. This is not the worst thing that can happen. The movie failed miserably at the box office, not even paying for itself. Some of the bigwigs at the film company lost their jobs as a result. Only Brad Pitt remained in the black. 
His fee was $17.5 million, seven times more than Edward Norton. Despite the failure, just a few years after the premiere, the film was recognized as one of the most outstanding films of our time and rallied an army of ardent fans around it. It will not be superfluous to say that Fight Club is the rarest case when the adaptation of the story surpassed the literary source on all accounts. Even the author himself, Chuck Palahniuk, admitted this. It would seem that after making a film where they really hit you in the face, almost knock out a tooth and so on, Brad would have gotten tired of this genre. But the actor found out that director Guy Ritchie was working on a new film. Pitt, being a big fan of his previous work, especially Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels from 1998, wrote to the director and asked for the role. And Ritchie agreed. The film Snatch became not only one of the brightest in Pitt's career, but also turned over time into a real classic of cinema. However, in more detail about the history of this film and other of Pitt's works, you will learn in the second part. And how soon it will be released depends only on you. As soon as this video gets 10,000 likes, we will immediately release a second part. The terms are really simple. And while you're waiting for a new video, we have a couple more videos for you that are worth your attention. Click on the icon on your screen and find out a lot of facts about these celebrities that most people don't know. Follow the link and watch. It was the Biographer Channel. Like this video and see you very soon. Bye-bye.